Hello. Hi guys, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Carolina and I work with data. This video is quite special for me because it is the 50th video on this channel. <laughs> This gig has been going on for quite a while now, eh? Some of you have asked me how to write a good data engineering CV or resume. So today we'll be talking just about that. I'll show you all you need to know to write a killer data engineering CV from three different aspects. The first aspect being how to structure your CV. The second aspect being what courses, degrees, what kind of experiences you should put on your CV. And the third and most important aspect is what kind of keywords employers look for. To be fair, almost all of these points will be applicable for writing a data science CV or even a software engineering CV. So if this is what you're aiming at, carry on watching, all right? Let's get started. Structuring your CV. Okay, so let's get started from the format of your CV. I highly recommend writing your CV in LaTeX. If you haven't come across LaTeX before, it is essentially a software for writing documents, just like Microsoft Word. But in LaTeX, you are almost coding how your document will look like, including how big the margins will be, etc., etc. The reason why I recommend using it over Microsoft Word or any other softwares that you might be using is because it is free, it is a standard in academia, and frankly, it's just way better than Word. Honestly, whenever I was trying to format something in Word back in the day, I would just get a headache. There's no way you can format your document in Word without just getting frustrated with it. Wow, I wish I was getting sponsored by LaTeX for all I've just said. <laughs> but no, it is an open source software. I recommend using Overleaf, which is an online editor for LaTeX, which is again, free to use. So here I'm in Overleaf, you're looking at my CV template. On the left-hand side, we're coding the solution, and on the right-hand side, we can compile and see how our document will look like when compiled. I'm making this template available for you, so check out the link in the description below. As you can see, this is a one-page CV. If you're applying for your first job or you only had a few small experiences in the past, like some internships or some volunteering experiences or something like that, then don't make your CV longer than one page. No one will have the patience to read a two-page essay about your life if it's not relevant for them. And if you're just starting out, then surely it will not be relevant. On the very top, you put your name, address, telephone number, and email address. In the UK, it is a standard not to include your photo on your CV, but it might be different in your country, so make sure to check that out. Then we have the education section. If you're just starting out, it is recommended that you put the education section at the top of your CV. Later on in your career, when you have more experiences, the structure is reversed and then you put your work experiences first and education second. But for now, let's just keep the education at the top. Make sure to include any relevant subjects that you studied and the grades that you achieved. And feel free to skip any subjects that you didn't do very well in and just include the subjects that you smashed. See, there is a reason why I said modules include and not modules or all modules, right? It gives you liberty to include whatever you want and you are honest about the fact that, you know, there's potentially more that you studied that you didn't choose to disclose. See, that's the smart thing to do. Don't let bad grades dim your shining light. Then we have two more sections, relevant experience and skills. So that's the rough structure. Now let's move on to the meat of your CV, that is the content. What stuff do you want to put on your data engineering CV? So we have this big section here, relevant experience. Now, what is that relevant experience that you should include here? Of course, the priority should be given to any sort of full-time work that you have had or have at the moment, especially data engineering related one, if you have it. But if you don't, don't worry, we can work around that too. Well, first of all, writing your CV happens before you sit in front of your computer. If you want to draw employer's attention, you first have to do something in your life that will show your determination, aptitude for learning, teamwork skills, 
etc etc and many different activities exemplify those kind of attitudes or those kinds of traits so it's not necessarily full-time data engineering work that you have to do there are other things you can do to show that you're great so what are examples of such things first of all data engineering related courses if you can go through an entire course on python or sql and you earn a certificate of completion that shows that you already have some skills that you're conscientious and you're capable of learning that's great right so let's have a look at this course learn sql basics for data science specialization i think it is an excellent course to put on your cv because not only does it show that you know sql but also it teaches you sql from a data engineering angle so you can add a course like this to your cv and the list what you've learned the next thing hackathons Hackathons are a great way to exemplify your teamwork skills and that you can work quickly under pressure and deliver a minimum viable product in a very short amount of time. That's very valuable. Of course, if you win a hackathon, that's even better, but even participation matters and you can put that on your CV. Next point, your own projects or contributing to open source projects. If you don't have much commercial experience and even if you do it is a great way of showing your skills and your creativity and your problem solving don't forget to include a link to your github profile because in this way a potential prospective employer can view your portfolio of projects the next thing is volunteering i'm sure you have heard of many volunteering opportunities in your area and they might be completely unrelated to programming or computer science and you might be thinking that it is a waste of time to do them but the truth is that any kind of experience that shows your initiative that shows that you're doing something with your life that shows your teamwork skills your leadership skills your problem solving skills or anything that such volunteering might call for is a great experience to put on your cv remember the worst thing you can do is doing nothing so if you have nothing else go do some volunteering and put that on your cv and the last point of course if you have any part-time jobs like even low skill jobs if you work uh, in kfc or in a fruit packaging factory or if you work in a shop or wherever and yes i'm talking from my own experience here then don't forget to include that on your CV as well. When I was starting out, uh, before I got my real commercial internship in the city, I included all sorts of stuff on my CV and I was actively seeking out those experiences because I knew that I can then put them on my CV. And then with time, you start getting better and better opportunities and they start replacing the less attractive ones from your CV. But it's always good to have something something is better than nothing okay now that we have that out of the way let's talk about the most important point that is keywords like it or not but employers won't spend hours analyzing your cv and trying to understand your potential they will just give it a glance scan it for a few minutes tops and then they will either put it on a discard pile or they will become interested so the key to writing a killer data engineering cv is figuring out what is interesting to your employer and fortunately it is not so hard to figure it out in fact employers almost explicitly tell you what interests them where in the job description so now just get ready for the best cv trick you'll ever see let's go and see an opening for a data engineering position at IBM. So you look at the IBM job description for a data engineering position and you read the key responsibilities of the role and also the key required skills that they expect you to have. So the first thing that you do is you look at the list and you pick the points that are true about you. The points that illustrate your true previous experience or points that you know that you can defend somehow with your previous experience. Let's say the following points are applicable to you. Now, the second thing you do, 
is you slightly reword, restructure those sentences and then put them on your CV. So, for example, the point provide the ability to work within agile development methodology and collaborate effectively with multidisciplinary teams would turn into applied agile development practices working in a multidisciplinary team or maybe worked in an agile multidisciplinary team. You know, you can reward them in any way you want. That's just two examples. And you put that rewarded sentence on your CV under relevant experience. For example, let's say a hackathon one. Then in the job description, they say proficient using Python, Spark, shell scripting, uh, SQL, etc. If you really are proficient in any of those technologies, don't forget to put that in your skills section. Of course, never lie on your CV because that will only end up badly. But if you have done something that they say, that they ask for in the job description, then you must put it on your CV. It would be foolish not to. So that's the trick. That's how you go about it. So one thing that should be running through your head now is, wait, so does that mean that I have to write a different CV for every company I'm applying for? The short answer is yes. It might seem like a little bit of a pain, but if you want to start getting interviews and start getting employers' attention, then this is what you do. Plus, it's typically not like you have to rewrite the whole document from scratch, right? It's just about amending a couple of points, changing a couple of uh, skills, perhaps uh, changing the order of the bullet points to make uh, the most important thing pop out. And by the way, it's not like it's an unethical practice or something. People do it and that's how you get interviews. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, then don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you're new to this channel. And also, I have a coffee account, so if you'd like to get me a cup of coffee, then I wouldn't say no. All right, I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.